The red herring fallacy, that's what I wanna discuss and explain in this video. And this fallacy is very important because assuming you are somebody that wants to have productive conversations with somebody, then this is a fallacy that you need to be aware of in terms of not only how to identify it, but also make sure that you aren't throwing it at the other person that you're having the conversation with. So this video is all for those people that wanna have productive conversations. So what is a red herring fallacy? And I should note that I'm also gonna show you a real world example of this. Not that I have anything against hypothetical examples, but I think when you can see these sorts of fallacies play out in the real world, then they're that much better in terms of helping you understand uh, you know, what they are and why they're just very distracting in terms of producing productivity. So the definition of a red herring is when diverting attention from the real issue by focusing instead on an issue having only surface relevance. Keep in mind that term, surface relevance to the first. So what do I mean by this? Well, like I said, let's look at a real world example. So what you see here is a social media post that I made and I commented on the fact that how Californians are getting up to $1,050 in quote unquote inflation relief checks. Now to set up the claim here being made, Hopefully we can, because this is basic logic, but hopefully we can all agree on this logic that, okay, if you do something that is causing a problem, that's not gonna do anything to solve the problem. In fact, that's the exact opposite. That doesn't make any sense, that if you're trying to solve a problem and then you do more of the thing that's causing the problem, well, that's totally backwards. That's not going to actually, well, solve the problem. And something that we can all agree on is that a big cause of inflation and prices going up is, well, the stimulus checks, right? When you send people money, just out of nowhere, that's going to cause prices to go up. Now, is this the only contributor to inflation? No, there can be other dynamics, but certainly everybody can agree that yes, a large role in causing prices to go up is when you just send money out to people, uh, you know, just because, right? So that's gonna be one of the main contributors to higher prices. So you see this, that, okay, wait a second. So the solution to higher prices is then to go and do something that was causing those higher prices there's a lot of irony in that, right? There, there's a lot of, wait a second, that seems very counterproductive to me. But then this brings up the red herring here. And this person says, well, you know what? We should celebrate each other having good things happen. Now, to be fair, it is good. If money just shows up in your bank account or shows up in the mailbox, that is a good thing. I mean, who doesn't like having some money show up? So that is a good thing. Now, you might be saying, wait, Clay, but... And the reason you're saying but is because you realize that this is only surface deep. This only has surface deep relevance because you understand that the claim being made is, wait a second, but we're trying to solve an overall problem. And by doing this, which sure is good to send people money, but what does it do for the overall problem? Well, it's gonna do the exact opposite because doing more of something that is creating the overall problem is not doing anything at all. So you are seeing the red herring here and the fact of, okay, yeah, it's good, but it's not actually doing anything. And then we have more of it where he says, you know what, people in the US lambast each other for getting help. So, okay, but this is surface deep again because sure you can talk about, well, should we be mad at these people for getting help? And, and because, okay, yeah, they're getting help, why are we getting angry at them? But it's, it's very distracting because, you know what, should you lambast people for getting help if it, the help is not really, helping people and you see how I'm starting to already go down, wait a second Clay, you're getting some sort of philosophical discussion that, that that's completely against the core point here is, does it really matter if, what does what you, you know, Americans labasting each other actually have to do with anything? And in this situation, again, I suppose you could make a little argument that it has to do with the topic, but little argument, surface deep, very distracting, not actually accomplishing anything in terms of the core claim being made. And then we have, for most people, it's enough money to make them cry joys of tears at how much it can help them. So now we have a little red herring with some emotion sprinkled into it, right? So well done to this person. They're getting very emotional. These people are crying tears of joy because they got money. And again, money, that is a good thing if it just shows up. And yeah, it can help. But once again, I'm sure there's another but here because you're saying, wait a second, but, and I wanna finish this out because you'll see this person ultimately refutes all these claims that are being made, and I think they're gonna fill in the butt for you, and then this person goes on to say, over the course of the coming months. Exactly, the coming months. In other words, but only for a short period of time before what? And you're saying, well, before prices go even higher, because again, Clay, what's going on here is people are doing the same thing that caused the main problem in the first place, exactly. So this person admits that, yeah, it is good. Yeah, it can help them in the short amount of time, right? In the coming months. 
But after that, well, we're gonna have more of that problem. So yes, everything that is said here is relevant, but only at a surface deep level, and it's very distracting because all these things do not actually tackle the core concern, the core claim being made, which once again, I'm not trying to come across as some great philosophical thinker or economist, it's very basic. If we can all agree, with everybody can, that sending free money to people does cause prices to go up. Again, my claim is not, that's the only reason, that's not what I'm saying, but it is definitely a core contributor. But then you do more of one of those core contributors, how is that actually solving the overall problem, which you can very clearly say, it's not solving the problem, but you bring up these red herrings as this person did, oh, it's good, you know, it's good to help people and, and all of that, but then they concede, well, yeah, but just in the coming months. In other words, it doesn't solve the overall issue. It only solves it in a small amount of time, which of course opens up the door of, okay, so then it, does it actually solve the problem if it only solves it for a small amount of time? And I think the argument is, well, well, no, it doesn't solve it. It's just gonna make it that much worse. So that's what a red herring is. This is how it can be used in the real world. And why, as you see here, it just sends, it distracts the conversation. Because then you start to debate words such as, well, is it actually good? If good means that from an overall sense, it's not solved. And all that is distracting. That's all counterproductive in terms of, like I said, the main claim being made in whatever discussion you may have. So if you found this helpful, if you have any suggestions for other fallacies, please hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Like I said, I do read comments and I'll highly consider if you leave any other sort of suggestions for videos like this. But if you are somebody that has a passion for having productive conversations, then like I said, hit that like button, leave a comment below or leave a maybe a red herring that you've ever come across and uh, I think we can get some good discussions going down in the comment section. But yes, Definitely be aware of the red herring, but also be aware, make sure you're not throwing it at other people so that we can all have those productive conversations. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.